we're going to explore here the um, role adrenaline uh, plays in our metabolic health, along with cortisol and insulin. Uh, if you look at the chart, it, it kind of maps out the whole flow for you. We start off at the top with stress. When the stress reaches the brain, uh, the first place to receive it is the hypothalamus. And then from there, it goes down. So you can see one arrow from the brain is that it makes a, a, a neurotransmitter called norepinephrine. Now, norepinephrine is both a neurotransmitter in the brain, and it works locally. Uh, it doesn't have to go anywhere, okay? It transmits themselves to other neurons in the brain and uh, exert its effect, including anxiety, alertness, uh, and so on. And if you uh, are <coughs> drink a cup of coffee, uh, that's where it's acting. Or if you take any street drugs, like amphetamines, the body feel up, and this is a neurotransmitter type effect. At the same time, the brain also sends signals through the HPA axis, the hypothalamus, pituitary adrenal axis down to the adrenal glands, and the signal is there. And in the adrenal glands, there are two parts. One is called the adrenal cortex, and one is called the adrenal medulla. Now, in the cortex, the, the, the will make a hormone called cortisol, and then in the medulla, will make a, a, a hormone called uh, adrenaline. So let's uh, look at the cortisol first. Cortisol is the anti-inflammatory hormones of the body. And in, in the first, if you have stress, the cortisol tends to go up in order to do what? The cortisol breaks down uh, the, blood, uh, the body and produces more sugar. You can see that. And why? It's because the body is preparing uh, you to run away and you will need energy. At the same time, the, body, the cortisol will also regulate uh, inflammation by uh, reducing because the body is anticipating that you're, you're going to be stressed, you're going to be inflamed, so the cortisol has an anti-inflammatory effect in addition to its blood uh, going up effect. So the cortisol is a kind of a universal uh, hormone. It's very, very uh, potent and is the body's primary anti-stress hormone. Okay, so that's number one. Uh, number two is that um, when you uh, have high cortisol, the body is uh, reacting normally. But ultimately, if you don't uh, have the cortisol comes down and then becomes dysregulated, then the body becomes uh, uh, lacking in cortisol. And that's when you get adrenal fatigue. Uh, and the symptoms include fatigue, uh, generalized for exercise capacity reduction, hormone dysregulation, progesterone, estrogen, uh, issues with menses, uh, uh, PMS, etc. The thyroid will slow down because the body wants the thyroid to slow down to conserve energy. So you will have a subclinical hypothyroid uh, to be considered. Uh, the blood pressure tends to go down because you're losing salt uh, as the aldosterone hormone, which is produced by adrenals, are affected when the adrenal functions are weakened. You also have central obesity at the muffin top. Uh, which is quite common. That's, of course, uh, separately covered in a different lecture as the cortisol goes up first and eventually flattens out. Now, uh, it's important to realize that when, the, we said earlier, cortisol raises blood sugar. You can see the arrow. But if you kind of step back and look at the adrenal medulla, the medulla receives stress signal from the body, uh, from the brain. And what does it do? It basically releases uh, adrenaline uh, into the bloodstream. Uh, this is what we call reactive sympathetic response. Reactive is because it's reacting from the brain. Sympathetic because adrenaline is part of the sympathetic uh, nervous system, and this is a response uh, to stress. Okay, and it's, it's the body's way of uh, uh, preparing us for fight or flight. And so, as the adrenaline goes up, you can see uh, the symptoms. I would include heart palpitation, ADD, ADHD. On the right hand side, anxiety disorder, OCD, uh, muscle tension will go up because adrenaline helps the muscle to constrict uh, in order to help you to run, uh, resulting in fatigue, increased lactic acid, and fibromyalgia. Uh, increased adrenaline can also cause restless leg, headaches, uh, urinary incontinence, bad wetting, chronic interstitial cystitis, uh, road rage, and a host of other things. Remember, the adrenaline is the ultimate and the last resort. So when the adrenaline comes out, everything else has to take a back seat. And uh, that's what is the design. 
Now, if we go backwards and take a look a little bit, you know there are three areas uh, that can increase the adrenaline. Number one, the cortisol from the adrenal glands. When increased cortisol will lead to ad increased adrenaline. Number two, increased uh, norepinephrine from the stress will also increase adrenaline because adrenaline is a, a chemically, uh, biochemically the daughter of norepinephrine. So norepinephrine, some of it will convert into adrenaline. So whether it is from adrenaline, uh, whether it's from cortisol, ultimately adrenaline also behaves like cortisol in, in its goal of raising blood sugar. So ultimately, all, the blood sugar has three kind of strikes uh, that's going, or three pathways. Yeah, you can get blood sugar increase from cortisol increase from the adrenals. You can get blood sugar increase from the adrenaline increase from, from the adrenal medulla. And you can have dietary carbohydrates. So if you eat a donut, you take a sweet, uh, you're tired and you drink a soda pop, that will automatically increase your blood sugar. Okay, so so far, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty clear and pretty straightforward. These are all been researched for a long time. Well, ultimately, what does the blood sugar do? Now, when you have an increase in blood sugar, you're going to have an increase in insulin, okay? Insulin is a hormone secreted, it's a peptide insulin secreted by the pancreas, and its job is to bring the sugar back down because you cannot have high sugar forever. So sugar can be secreted normally, as you can see on the arrow, and it can be excessively uh, uh, increased. So let's say now if you have too much insulin, secreted by the pancreas as a response to either too much food that is high in carbohydrate, too much stress, then your body's blood sugar will go down because that's the job of the insulin. Now, normally insulin is secreted in the right amount that will not bring it, will bring the sugar down from a high, but not too low in terms of ultimate sugar level. So the, the body releases a certain amount of insulin just right to bring the sugar level down to normal from high if you are eating a high a carbohydrate diet or under stress. However, if there's too much insulin release or over a period of time, then the body's blood sugar actually goes down. So this go down uh, can be uh, signified with things like a food coma. So if you eat a meal that's high in pasta, or carbohydrates, and you know, soon after that, you feel palpitations, and you feel uh, kind of a sleepy. Uh, you have brain fog. Uh, that is a reactive hypoglycemia. And what does it do? The reactive hypoglycemia is telling us that it is uh, low in blood sugar, uh, even though on an absolute basis, if you were met to would measure the blood sugar, it may be between uh, 70 to 90 range. It's really not low, so it does not uh, qualify for the clinical definition of hypoglycemia, but it's reactive, meaning the blood sugar, if you measure, uh, it is normal, uh, but if you ha but you have symptoms of uh, this, you know, brain fog, like I said earlier, uh, anxiety. And part of it is because the hi reactive hypoglycemia has a feedback loop that, uh, that the body thinks, oh, I'm in danger, so let me release more adrenaline. So the feedback loop goes up to uh, release more adrenaline, which will then uh, look at the arrow, go to heart palpitations, etc., 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 ADHD, anxiety. So it's not unusual for people, uh, after they eat a food high in carbs, to have this type of symptoms. So that is uh, a, a reactive hypoglycemic type reaction, okay? Now, if you look at the other part of insulin, if it's a normal release of insulin, then the sugar that you take from your diet, you know, from the high cortisol and the high adrenaline would normalize. And then the sugar is then pushed into cells, especially in the liver, to be stored. Now, the liver stored the sugar as fat, ultimately, and triglyceride, okay? This is how the body stores its excessive carbohydrate. Because remember, the body cannot use carbohydrate 24-7. The carbohydrate load it acts as an instant fast reserve that only lasts two to eight hours. And after that, you have to convert the body's fat and protein into uh, carbs and, and, and uh, other substrates such as ketones uh, for the brain to work. So let's look at this more closely. The sugar that's stored in the fat and triglyceride uh, can reach up to a certain level. 
right? Because the liver is a kind of a closed organ, right? It cannot expand forever because there are other things uh, in the stomach wall. Then where does the extra, I'm talking about extra fat and extra triglycerides stored? So you look at down here, it looks at, uh, becomes fatty liver. So when you look at the liver, uh, it has fat deposits on the outside pathologically. Uh, that is very classic uh, fatty liver and usually is accompanied by increased triglyceride uh, uh, in the blood. And as the body have more and more triglyceride and a liver that is congested, what happens is that the body tries to get rid of it. So how do you get rid of the triglyceride? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, from the liver, you package it, the body package it in the form of LDL and VLDL. So these are lipoproteins that carry the cholesterol and the triglyceride from the liver and secrete it out from the liver to the peripheral blood uh, stream so that uh, the blood can have uh, those uh, fat and triglyceride as source of energy if the car carbohydrate load uh, goes down and you still need energy but it runs out. So if you are on a, a low-carb diet or fasting, the body is going to break down liver fat. And that's why the triglyceride goes up, your LDL goes up, uh, your VLDL goes up, and your HDL also go up. But the good news is your, your weight will go down and your blood sugar uh, will go down because if you are fasting, you're not going to be uh, needing as much insulin. Now, uh, um, so we've discussed about the fatty uh, liver, and that's uh, why it's very important to look at triglyceride. And uh, not just look at HDL, LDL, VLDL, and especially total cholesterol, which is kind of uh, useless, uh, so to say, because it doesn't tell you the clear picture. Now, remember, we talked about when the liver becomes saturated, well, when, then the sugar cannot be pushed into the cell anymore, right? So the, you, you, the body continues to make insulin uh, when it sees sugar in the bloodstream. The sugar is being pushed into the liver as triglyceride and fat. But there's a limit. When this limit is reached, then the, the sugar cannot go in. It's like, uh, you know, the, the car is, uh, can only hold five passengers. You put eight in, the three cannot go in, so it has to leave outside. So the excess sugar will be spilled back into the blood, and therefore your blood sugar will go up, and this is a classic sign of adult onset of diabetes type 2. So uh, people who are obese or takes a lot of carbohydrates, uh, in that's beyond what the body needs will have a high sugar uh, level in the blood uh, and the body will then go into a loop uh, that will make more insulin uh, in order to push it in. So there's a, a loop. When you have more sugar in the blood, the body usually will make more insulin. But of course, there's also a limit. After a while, the insulin from the pancreas uh, become exhausted and then you don't have enough insulin so the body's uh, blood sugar uh, continue to rise, okay? So the fat cell saturations, as you can see here, result in uh, uh, excess blood sugar spilling into the blood. And no matter how hard you push uh, insulin, uh, the body resists. So this is known also as uh, insulin resistance. And that's why, uh, you know, drugs uh, that help with insulin uh, delivery uh, or sensitivities, uh, including metformin or even straight insulin itself, it works. Uh, but it works to a certain degree. And in the beginning, it works very well. And some people can have it last for a long time. But ultimately, uh, the, you didn't solve the problem. The underlying problem is that, you know, you, you, you have a saturation problem and you have to create the room for the liver to expand. And the only way to do it is to reduce carbohydrate intake at the source. That way, you don't force the liver to expand and, and then you create room for the insulin to come out from the pancreas and then we establish its auto-regulation mechanisms. So if you are on a low-carb diet, you will lose weight, your triglyceride will go down, your VLDL will go up, uh, your, your triglyceride overall will go down uh, as, the, uh, as the liver uh, tries to use uh, the triglyceride to maintain its weight, but it's not going to overdo it as compared to if you just overload your body with carbs. On the other hand, if you don't watch your diet and you take a lot of carbs in, your, your liver will be saturated with sugar and then it is spilled back into uh, the bloodstream. The fat cell will be saturated and causing insulin resistance and then ultimately on uh, uh, adult onset diabetes, which then uh, create a more, uh, another uh, set of problems physiologically and, and including uh, kidney damage, uh, cardiovascular disease, etc. So in summary, you know, you have to look at adrenaline, 
insulin, and cholesterol. And all those three things are played together. Of course, you know, it depends the symptoms that you have. You know, metabolically, uh, the body is deranged if there's stress because of the cortisol increasing adrenaline and then causing insulin problems flowing downstream. But if you have a lot of carbohydrate, you increase blood sugar, that will also cause insulin to be dysregulated. And lastly, uh, if you have uh, uh, a high amount of adrenaline from uh, stress, uh, uh, from cortisol or independently, uh, then you also have this problem. So appreciating uh, the role of adrenaline, cortisol, and insulin are uh, playing an active role in the little triangle, and they affect each other. Increased cortisol lead to increased adrenaline and increase in blood sugar. Increased adrenaline also goes back and increased cortisol and also increased blood sugar. And if you add the insult with the uh, increased dietary uh, sugar, with car diet, car diet, car dietary carbohydrates, Ultimately, your, your sugar is going to be sky high. And then this will tax your pancreas to make more insulin. And insulin becomes dysregulated, and you have diabetes, you have insulin resistance, you have lipid, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this lipidemia, uh, etc. So uh, is, I hope this uh, is, uh, you can appreciate the, the importance of balancing cortisol, insulin, adrenaline in your body. So if you balance these three, not only will you metabolically be more healthy, your weight will go down, your cardiovascular risk will go down. Okay?